He's on Joe, he's Trans-Canada Highway now. He's headed past Clarendale, Gander. Headed for the ferry, going to law school. North Sydney, headed for North Sydney. Where the bass, corner broke. But there's trouble. He's driving his father's old Dodge. I started the Dodge slowly down the winding road to the terminal. Port of Bass, many of you may have been there. The three awkward words of that sentence were Dodge and Idle Walk, slowly, employing schoolboys moving like snails to school, and terminal, meaning vinyl, like a terminal disease. As my truck descended towards the boat, so did my heart in my chest. I began to sweat and shake a bit. I gripped the wheel with both hands and gasped for breath. Then a big old sob came out of me, and I knew I was in trouble. I put my foot down on the brake and stopped my journey to law school. I turned into the parking lot of a small diner with a sign over the door that said, last stop for ferry. I pushed the truck, parked the truck, to where I could see it and walked in. A bunch of people were inside, probably waiting for the boat. But an eerie quiet pervaded the room, as if a robbery were in place. People moved about and went out the door with eyes averted. Then I saw why. Over by the coolers, on the other side of a pool table, were two large unkempt men who appeared to be part of a motorcycle gang. Were there hell's angels in Port of Bass? They finished their game of pool and stood around for a minute exchanging a few words. Then they hugged loudly and slapped each other on the, their back, black leather backs. One of them swung around on his thick heels and swaggered out the door. I could see the fellow jumping out of, a fellow jumping out of his way before the door slammed shut. The other biker looked sadly at the door and sat down at the little table, now with an empty chair. I went to the counter and ordered a big plate of french fries, gravy, and a large Coke. Out in the parking lot, we could hear the departing angel revving up his machine. The floor vibrated under my feet, and the window rattled like an Apollo moon launch. There was no other place to sit, so I went over to the earthbound angel, any port in a storm. Can I sit here? I asked. He nodded without looking up. So I sat and ate my fries. Every now and then I'd glance out the window at the truck. You expecting company? He said. No, I'm just checking on my truck. Catching the ferry? He placed a large steel helmet on the table beside my fries. It was a replica of the standard German army issue. I guess it was a replica. He ran his fingers through thinning hair and looked at me. I think so, I said. You think so? You don't know if you're going to catch the ferry. His honest question tapped a nerve. I looked at him in the eyes and I said, when I eat those fries and drink that Coke, I'm going to decide. Outside, we could hear the Apollo launch roaring up the hill and possibly into space. <laughs> the biker said, I crashed my bike outside Gander. Total right off. I have to get a job in the mainland now, make some money. I'll come home on my new bike by Christmas. It's going to be cold driving the bike back home in the winter, I said. Yeah, and I don't want to go, he said. Why not? Because I met a woman. Now he was looking me straight in the eyes. Who is she? That guy's sister, Jasmine. He pointed at the door. We heard the last roar of the departing bike, and in the quiet of the room, his words were loud. Some people had been eavesdropping because a few murmured, ah, sadly, and shook their heads. <laughs> I don't want to go either, I said. 
My heart spoke the words my head did not yet know. Why are you going? Law school, no housing. You were accepted at Dow? Yeah, I munched on my fries. That's a pretty good gig. I know, I know guys who apply but never got in. They accept 10 Newfoundlanders each year because we don't have a law school. So what's the problem? You in love too? Yes. I don't know, I said. Man, you're not sure of anything. He reached into his pocket and pulled something out. <clears throat> the room went silent again, and people craned their necks to see what it was. Only a small brass case from which he extracted a business card and handed it to me. On it were the words, you have assisted the peace angels, were printed in raised red letters on a white background. It reminded me of Father Sign. On top was a peace sign, and below was a cycle with angels' wings. If you're ever in Gander, visit our clubhouse. The boys will treat you good. Just show them that card. Thanks, I said, putting it in my shirt pocket. He stood up. Look, pal, I just decided. I'm going back to Gander. You have a safe trip, a safe voyage tonight. He stood in sturdy leather boots and held out his hand to me. He was tall with wide shoulders and a lanky build. How are you going to get there? I asked. Hitchhike. I'll be there by dawn. He smiled like he was just learning how to do it. A voice came across the quiet room. I can take you as far as the Kippen's turn off. A buck-toothed fellow who had been listening from another table. He wore a red plaid shirt and a baseball cap proclaiming some brand of beer. That's a good start, someone said, and the other patrons nodded their approval. <clears throat> I was offered a, a fellowship at Memorial, I said. Customers nodded and considered this as an option. <laughs> That's great. They pay you to study, and you could stay at home, the biker said. Then why pay your own way to live with strangers, the buck tooted fellow asked. My coat was all gone. I reached to the round cardboard plate and took up the last french fry. I studied it for a bit, then I popped it in my mouth and heard myself say to the biker, now I'm not going to tell you what he said. <laughs>